Hey everybody, so we are in for part one of my conversation with Mike Atkin, who is an institution in the knowledge graph and data space. So in part one, I am going to be interviewing him on some of his tips and tricks in, you know, how do you actually get knowledge graph to become a reality at your organization? And then in part two, which is coming next, he is going to be doing a reverse interview with me talking about how I get Knowledge Graph off the ground. So if this sounds interesting to you, keep on watching. Because I've, <laughs> I've been involved um, in the information biz my entire career, but always as the scribe and the analyst for the industry. So I worked for trade associations and organizations and things of that nature. So I've been able to observe it from the beginning phases where it was publishers discovering what is information, this is our product, how do we manage it, all the way through the technology revolutions, up through um, kind of the birth of, of, of digital, you know, internet enabled content, yep. right? Tagging. And then I did mostly the financial information services domain. In the financial services domain, data is critical, right? It represents yep. a contractual obligation yep. and you mm -hmm. must do it precisely. And it's very yep. legal and there's lots of requirements and obligations, yep. right? We also have to understand that things are conceptual, yep. right? Customer is not a one thing, it's a concept, yep. right? My customer is also your supplier, your supplier is yep. also my agent yep. and, and it's yep. also my uh, you know, partner and, you know, yep. you know so yep. roles have a, have a big yep. part. Yeah, I mean, that I would say surprisingly, maybe not so surprisingly though, that's one of the main questions people ask me is, you know, okay, so, you know, they watch my channel and they say, okay, well, how would you define customer? And I'm like, that's, it's so surprising. That's one of the top things that people ask me. And it's like, it's, it's up to your business. What persona do you have? You can, have, you can have internal customers, you can have external customers. As you're saying, there's so many different roles and yet everyone is trying to find, you know, the a taxonomy of different customers. And I think that, while that might be interesting actually to see, you know, a survey of what people would define as customer, it's really dependent on your use case. And I think that that's one of those other issues where without that meaning, you can't add your business logic on top of this. You know, it's 100%, I think you, you hit the essence of the challenge, right? Which is, it's a thing, it's a real thing. It's a thing <laughs> in your world, you know, yeah. you put a label on it, it might be a different label than somebody else calls it, but it's still a thing. It's still yep. the same thing that it was doing. So, <laughs> Describe the thing, don't describe the label. And that's why semantic standards are so good because they enable us to do that. So, so the first problem is, well, we have a data mismatch. Um, one of my colleagues called it incongruence. I love that word, right? So the data yeah. is no longer matching and we're spending all of this energy trying to reconcile it, right? Yeah. You know, what did you mean? What does it mean in that context? And this back office activity is different. Or the you. disambiguation problems. I mean, disambiguation yeah. on names. I can tell you every single company I've ever worked at, every single company I've ever talked to, that's one of their number one problems. The other thing that, that occurs to me is that we are still managing data um, using um, technology that is literally two generations old, right? I think relational yeah. databases are, are 75 years old but it's what everyone knows. Yeah. Right, so really good for computation, not so good for flexible analysis uh, and look at things in multiple yeah. ways. And, you know, yep. Yep. I, I call that structural rigidity. But I think that that's, that flexibility that is associated with, you know, the, the graph-like structures, I think that's why a lot of folks don't always know that there are standards out there for some of them because they hear flexibility and they think Wild West, that, oh, it can't have standards if it's so flexible. So I think that, that that's some some mis misunderstanding on the part of a lot of folks yeah, that are that's into a good this. Point. Let's, let's call it analytical flexibility, right? Because that's what we're really yeah. doing. I, um, I sat down with the head of risk for um, a Canadian bank uh, a couple of years ago. And um, he told me, he goes, um, I have an army of analysts. They're all well paid. And they spend 80% of their time yeah. reconciling data. 80% uh, of their time. Yep. And then yep. they finally get a chance to analyze data. They get big insights. So if you turn that yep. equation around, you know, look at the benefits. That's that the get. goal, right? That's our goal. I 100% I agree with that. How do you normally try to uh, get your clients or, or anybody you're talking to over that, that, that hump of understanding? I think there's a couple of obvious rules. The first one is I know that all of the people who are doing it um, are so um, interested in how it works and, and think that that's so amazing. Mm -hmm. and they just want to explain to people the concept of inference capabilities and triple yeah. store processing yeah. and, you know, and edges and nodes and it's like, <laughs> which are fantastic, but of no interest to <laughs> business people or executives. 
And we, and we have to recognize, you know, executives think about, you know, business, you know, top of house velocity. They think about uh, competitiveness, yeah. um, you know, technology execs. They think about resiliency and and um, um, being able to uh, deal with uh, integration problems, you know, and business execs want time to value. They don't care about how it works. We care about it. Yeah. Right, right. So we got, right. we, got to, we got to learn to speak the language of the business that we're talking to, you know, yeah. all of them are business. Right? Well, and bring them along for the ride too, right? Like it, it, at some point you do have to make sure they understand very generally, why is graph different than relational? Just so that when they are thinking about business needs, they might think, oh, this might be a, a solution that we want to look into. Yes, absolutely. Right? And, and if you look at the KPIs that uh, organizations and companies think about, you can put them in the classic three C's, cost, capability, mm -hmm. and control. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you look at if you look at the cost equation, right, we're spending all this time integrating. We have all of these redundant systems that we've got to support. We have um, all these FTEs of people who are doing that integration capability. We have yeah. errors and problems and things that break because the data doesn't line. So I, um, I've done the research at least twice now, once with IBM and once with Pricewaterhouse with PwC. Mm -hmm. It's at least 30 percent of total operational cost. 30 percent. I can believe that. Right yeah, off the top. For sure. Capability is what everybody wants, right? So this is give, you know, the big problem is business frustration, right? Give yeah. them tools to allow them to look at things and do their what if scenario based yeah. analysis, right? Yeah. That's, you know, and, and you can include in that enabling machine learning and all the yeah. other yeah. capabilities yeah. that go along with it. Yeah. Right? Then the third C, at least in the financial industry, it's huge, is control, yeah. right? Want to make sure that we know where the data came from, where it's going, how it's transformed. You know, yeah. uh, we want to protect privacy. We got to worry about yeah. fraud. We got regulatory yeah. compliance. You know, and yeah. many industries have the same problems. Like when you go cost, capability, and control, um, um, and you get all, you get to ad address all of these. That, that that begins to talk the language of business. Yeah, and right. and in everything you just said, you didn't once say knowledge graph. You didn't once talk about where things are being stored and how they're being queried. That's one of the keys, I think, to what you're saying, Mike, is you don't necessarily have to get into all that tech. You just speak to the problems that they have in those three C's. And that gives yep. you the leeway to then prove to them how you know these things are going to work and how it's going to be beneficial to the company. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, um, the insight that I gained was when I was taking a walk with my daughter when she was like 14. And she used to sit outside my office and listen to me yap <laughs> about data all the time. She finally <laughs> asked this question. She goes, you know, what is data? I thought it was a great question. Nice, yeah. You know, and, and, you, and you can look at it just in terms of you as a person, right? You know, you can be represented as data, and there are some simple facts about you. Height, age, weight, hair color, address, yeah. eye color, you know, et cetera. Yep. Um, and there are some relationship facts about you, right? Mm -hmm. You have family and friends and school and, you know, yep. and, and you put that together, the simple facts mm -hmm. and the relationship facts, and that describes you precisely, nobody else. Yeah, yeah. Nobody else has that combination of simple facts yeah. and relationship yeah. facts. And it's the same thing about everything yeah. that we're describing. That's a good way of putting it, yeah. So, yeah, we kind of have to demystify all this. Oh, 100%. I love that. Unambiguous shared meaning, right, which is the other concept, right? We, we just want to make yeah. sure that, you know, what you're talking about is the same thing I'm talking about. Yeah. And it has to be precise because in many instances, precision really matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get the wrong, like to, to your example earlier, if you get uh, one thing wrong about that composition of data that was your daughter, you, you maybe took the wrong kid home at the hospital. Like that's a go. big problem. <laughs> there you go. You know, I, um, I have a, a personal experience of um, identification being the problem as well. You know, I have a something I call the holy trinity of data management, um, oh, okay. identify, describe, and express. Ooh, Those yeah, are, that's, like the, that. that's the holy trinity. Yep. Um, this um, kind of semantics 401 thing intrigues me greatly. Right, because yeah. you do, as an exec, need to understand that this is different, mm -hmm, and and, mm -hmm. and we, we we have to do so without like getting too deep into the how yeah. it works. Right. Yep. So I think mm -hmm. I've I've defined it as really just four standards. That's all there okay. are. Right. Yeah. There is standards for identity. Right. Instead mm -hmm. of multiple identifiers, everything mm -hmm. tried to reckon. You just have one identifier. You know, yeah. Rosetta Stone kind of. Um, yep. Everything yep. gets linked to one thing. So that's yeah. that's critical meaning right which is the, the incongruence problem and things have mm -hmm. precise meaning that's what ontologies are right they are just you know yep. the description of the things and its relationships you know the meaning yep, yep. expressed in standards you know rdf owl yeah, you know, yep. there's many flavors of the standards but expressed in standards 
supported by business rules. It mm -hmm. also have to be executable. That's it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Identity, yeah. meaning expressed in standards and rules. Yeah. Right? Yeah. With that, with that, you get, I'm going to say, four or five really big capabilities. Right. Okay. You get quality by math. Mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. then is aligned to meaning and rule. Yeah. And it, if it doesn't align, it doesn't get in. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that kind of quality assurance is what you know, kind of everybody seeks. Yeah. And it's you know kind of what you get. One of the things you get, you get um, reusability, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of creating um, each and every model differently, you know, because some you know engineer was smart in the way they did it, and they're all different. They're just basic concepts, right? They're like building blocks. Yeah. yeah. You know, you get yeah. this basic concept, just put them together, kind of like yep. Tinker Toys, as Dave McCombs says. Um, <laughs> You get um, context, right? And and every single thing that I've run into so far can be precisely defined by identity, meaning, plus time, like when it occurred, mm -hmm. yeah. plus source, right? And and, my, and 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 you can express all context with identity, meaning, time, and source. So a so question you, on that then. Yeah? So looking at the the pillars that you outlined, one of which was standards. One thing that I have heard from a lot of folks that are trying to use RDF is that time part is really difficult, right? Yeah. And unless you're using RDF star, which thankfully we now have, that's going to help a lot. But what if I have a, a very similar role, but on different different times to, to a company? That doesn't work very well with those standards as they are today. So how would you help someone through that aspect? Because I can see that as being kind of tricky, especially in the finance area that you've worked in. Well, if you uh, can define time, and now, um, actually, do not mistake me for an ontologist. Do not mistake I, me for any kind of expert. Yeah, yeah. You know, I am the yeah, scribe, yeah, yeah. an analyst. I am not yeah, yeah. the expert. But I did sit through all of the conversations on the financial industry business ontology, where they had to figure out how do you incorporate the concepts of present time and past time and future mm -hmm. time into the ontology, right? So yeah. that's just a foundational component of of the way that you, you can describe the a well-engineered so ontology. Right? Because okay. you you want to yeah. know at least in the financial industry, you know, what was the price of this portfolio last week? What is it now? What is it, mm -hmm. you know, you know, at the close of market? What is yeah. it after correct? You know, yeah. it's like those yeah. things are all real things, right? So yeah. Yeah. the price a week ago is not the mm -hmm. same as the price today, even though they're right. both price, right? So right. You, you know. right, right, right. Yeah, and I think that that's important too, is, you know, going back to that, that first thing that we were talking about on flexibility and standards. Sometimes they, you know, they somehow in, the, in your brain don't always connect. I think this is another one of those situations where we have these standards, they are very rigid. This is a class, this is what it is. Here are the exact definitions of what it is, except for these exceptions, <laughs> right? Like that always happens. And I feel like that's one of the reasons that it's so enticing, like to your, to your point where the benefits you get. One of the benefits is if it doesn't um, meet the math, it doesn't get in. But what if that's 90% of your content doesn't get in. And then that that seductive piece gets in there where it's like, well, let's make a little exception here. Let's, you know, well, maybe, well, well, and then you no, get no, another big on, mess. On, 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 that's really important. We have to separate those things as, as concepts, okay, okay. right? One is, um, um, are we going to make the data um, defined, understandable, precise, and uh, flexible? The other one is, oh, we got a lot of dirty data. We got to figure out how to manage. And, and, and those are two problems. They're real problems. They're not the same problem. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, and, no. And I, I understand that. But I'm saying that when you are getting into a real project, that is the problem that you're dealing with. So you yeah. want your, your and sometimes not even your desire, it's regulatory, you have to abide by these rules. But then what happens, and this happens a lot with folks that I talk to, then a lot of their data doesn't get in. To your point, that doesn't mean yeah. it doesn't ever get in. It means now you have to go, you now know the, the body of work you have to go and fix. But my point is, I think that that area is where we need to get people um, their buy-in on it very early yeah, so on, let, let, if let me, they uh, think it's going to be magic, that it's all yeah. going to fit in once we're done, then we're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good point. Um, semantic standards and knowledge graph are second. Data hygiene and governance is first. <laughs> and you and you, you, you must um, have a um, an appropriately described um, a data infrastructure before you use the standards appropriately. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. systems of record, understanding data flow, um, uh, quality assurance criteria, mm -hmm. um, you know, source management, um, um, you, know, uh, you know, inventory. Uh, you, know, you, you can list the things that were, and, and I've taught this for years, those are still required. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. the, 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 um, the key is 
once you've done all this work, you don't keep doing it over and over and over and over again. Yep. Yep. Adopt the standards that were designed for that. So you yep. do it once. But to your point, right. I think you made a very good point very early on in this is if you scope this appropriately, the data cleanliness that you have to figure out, even if you don't have it all figured out right away, if you're trying to do a, a, a bucket of information cleaning and then put it into these standards, it is a great way to understand the actual level of effort for that project. To your point, oh wait, we don't have UIDs for all of our concepts. Yeah. Whoops, probably yep. need to start there, yep. <laughs> right? Yep. So, um, so it's so insightful when people start to capture the FTEs and, and, and cost of doing all that, you know, kind of data cleansing that yeah. we do continually. And you, look, yeah. you count up the man hours and the, and the thing, and you go, yep. wow, this is a lot of wasted effort, you know? <laughs> of course, yeah. And when you, yeah. When you go, wait a minute, this is a solvable problem, guys. We, yeah. can, we can fix this problem. Like, th th this is a really strong business case, in my opinion. Yeah, no, and I, I agree. I, just, I, I think that also, you know, for the audience especially, one thing that I would also make sure you do if you're going into this is, you know, as Mike is saying, make sure you do your due diligence and understand in current, what is the current state? How much time, how much effort? What business problems are you trying to solve with this that you can't maybe solve today? Or more likely, what technical debt have you accumulated because you're doing yep. it in this weird way that, you know, I've seen that a lot where people just didn't know graph existed. So they try to do all of this in relational and the technical debt, oh my goodness, it just like starts stacking and they just, they, they don't know what they don't know, right? And I think that kind of comes back full circle to that information literacy is you have to understand what are the key components. And I think, Mike, what you've done for us in this in this, in this this talk is kind of mapping out what some of those foundational things are for people to have a chance at getting this right. 